So my students arrive with the same misconceptions that the general public has. And the last thing I'll say about this, Zach, is the, the why. Why do they have this misconception? Because about 90 to 95% of all of the traditional media coverage of NIL focuses on what? like to welcome you to another episode of the Brand Power Analysis. Today I have on Bill Carter. Hey Bill, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Zach. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. No problem. So let's just kind of start off by telling everyone a little bit about yourself, um, what you do for a living, um, and how you work with the athlete space. Sure. Uh, my name is Bill Carter. And my primary, uh, my primary role these days is acting as a name, image, and likeness, otherwise known as NIL, consultant and educator. Um, and in that space, what I do is work with sports organizations, universities, high school athletic associations, and brands to understand, and in some cases, capitalize on NIL, in some cases, mitigate the impact of NIL. Um, I like to say, Zach, that I'm not necessarily an NIL advocate, not at least not for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also not someone who uh, thinks the sky is falling because NIL is a reality. Um, and that's really not my role. My role is to help organizations manage NIL in the way that that they see uh, that they see fit. In addition to my consulting practice, I also write a column called NIL Corner for Sports Business Journal. And finally, I teach uh, what I'm proud to say was one of the first college courses in NIL. It's called NIL and College Sports. And I teach that across the street at the University of Vermont. Beautiful. What would you, what would you, what, what department, what, what part of the university is, is uh, your program in? Yeah, that's a great question. I don't often get that question. Uh, so I uh, developed the course and I had a relationship with the University of Vermont previously. Um, I've taught uh, a class in sports entrepreneurship in the business school. Uh, so the short answer to your question is NIL is in the business school at the University of Vermont. Now, that's not always the case at some universities, but I really advocated for the course to be in the business school and not necessarily associated with the athletic department um, or another part of the university, because the way I'm teaching NIL is really uh, intended not just for student athletes, though I tend to have a lot of student athletes in my classes, maybe, you know, 25% of the students uh, end up being student athletes, but I'm really teaching the course uh, with sort of the 50,000 foot view of NIL's impact on college sports. And then maybe some things you'd want to know if you thought you wanted a career in college sports. Mm -hmm. So it's in the business school, and I, I love it. It's been a, an unbelievable experience for me, and I hope we've uh, created some future NIL experts that will land somewhere in college sports. Yeah, no, it's interesting that you say that because we work with ourselves, work with college athletes and, and even professional athletes and um, and sports-related businesses, and so we have we have a lot in common in that. And one thing that I I heard you say there is is only about twenty five percent of of your students are really athletes. And so just to kind of give everyone kind of a a spectrum, what other what other disciplines do you usually see? Um, and they may not be disciplines, but you you kind of know what I mean. But what yeah. other kinds of uh, students do you see kind of taking this course? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll use the the, the term profile, right? Yeah, there you so, go. Uh, so all of my students have been juniors, seniors, or grad students. It's open to all. 
Um, you know, the, the class sizes at a place like University of Vermont um, are relatively small. So uh, I teach only about 40 students and that's by design. It's mm -hmm. uh, sort of, uh, you know, I'm closed in by, you know, space and time and those sorts of things. I, we have room for about 40 students uh, in the business school in the classroom where I teach. Um, and so the, the profile is um, a, a business major. Some of them um, have identified already through their minors or a concentration that they want to go towards sports. Uh, maybe they're going to enter into college sports, athletic administration, or they want to enter some other part of the sports industry, teams, leagues, uh, the agent business, uh, sports marketing firms, and so forth. Uh, so I would say that when they arrive in my class, uh, one is they've already had, a, a, you know, a couple of years under their belt in the business school. So when we're talking about general marketing or business concepts, um, they have a real uh, good understanding. And we end up really just applying those to the athlete marketing and NIL space. Yeah, no, no, no that totally makes sense. And I, I agree with you. I think it should be in the business school. Um, I, I think that there's just so much behind it. Um, in general, and it, as, as, as you know, it's it's such a Wild West kind of scenario right now with Nil that um, depending on the school, depending on uh, the team, depending on the brand, you know, and so there's so much that goes into it that um, I think a lot of people get intimidated by some things and, and then honestly tend to, how do I explain this? I, I feel like a, a lot of not just students, but I think because of the the awareness and the education side of not understanding it, they tend to think that it's completely different than it, what, it, what it really is. Um, and so with that said, um, and kudos on the sports, the, the sports journal, I've read a couple of your articles that they, they're great. So I, I appreciate that additional content you give out to the world. We'll definitely uh, give our viewers a, a link to that um, when we, when we post this, but uh, um what would you say is for any of these these kids in your class, um, any of these profiles, do you feel tends to be their biggest misconception around nil in general? Yeah. Well, I think they, it's such a great question. I, I promise I won't say that again, but <laughs> I, I try my best to give great no, no, questions. I can only it's use okay. that twice. I can only do that <laughs> twice for podcast. I've now used it up. Uh, so uh, I think that most students arrive in my class with the same misconception as high school students and their parents as 75% of college student athletes and coaches, and believe it or not, administrators, particularly administrators maybe outside of the Power Five schools who have maybe uh, been forced to pay less attention to name, image, and likeness. And the first general misconception is that uh, it's, is, is, it's very definition. NIL is the right of publicity. It's not the right to endorsements. It's not the right to earn income. It is the right of publicity. And with that right of publicity, the student athlete can now do a number of NIL activities. And I think we've come to a place where that's really a defined term that means, you know, five or six of the key activities, social media, camps, clinics, private instruction, licensing, endorsements, as in working on behalf of a brand. I'm probably leaving one out right now off the top of my head. But those are really the key NIL activities. And so when students arrive at my class, they tend to think that NIL is about endorsements. And the vision they have for endorsements is a pro sports style endorsement deal that involves a brand paying an athlete to maybe do something on social media or maybe maybe do something in a traditional 30 second ad or do an autograph signing or show up at a live event. And while some of that applies to the NIL space, it doesn't apply to more than maybe one or 2% at most of all college athletes. 
most college athletes doing NIL are doing activities that don't look anything like the pro sports style version of an endorsement deal. They are, they may be doing autograph sessions, but it's at a local business. Mm -hmm. They may do, you know, an appearance, but it's at a local business. They are probably doing social media, but it's not necessarily in that social media influencer sense. It could be, it can also be some other things. Uh, which we we may get into in this conversation. So I think that's the biggest misconception. You know, I I do a, a lot of research. I do you know pretty large scale surveys every month. I've got a a panel of five thousand uh, current college student athletes and about a thousand high school prospects, those who intend to playing at the next level. And when I do those surveys, I generally find out that about seventy five percent of high school prospects can't give an accurate definition of what NIL is, 75%. Actually, about you know, 65, 66% of college athletes can't give you a really accurate definition unless you're really grading on a curve. So my students arrive with the same misconceptions that the general public has. And the last thing I'll say about this, Zach, is the, the why. Why do they have this misconception? Because about 90 to 95% of all of the traditional media coverage of NIL focuses on what? College football, power five, quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. And those deals tend to be the ones that look most like traditional pro sport style endorsement agreements, endorsement mm -hmm. deals. Um and the media largely ignores the other 90 to 95%, um, which is, you know, all the other NIL activities by a lot of other athletes that you've never heard of. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, what I always tell these college athletes, especially when um, they're in the middle of school, is that you know, because we always come at it from a personal branding side. Like that's, that's, that's what we do. We really help. We're, we're a branding firm. We, we really try to help athletes find their why, you know? And so we always kind of tell them like, listen, like that's probably why you have it in the business school is, you know, you're, it's, it's kind of a business, you know, you're kind of having this business and you have to understand the way business works. And, a lot of these larger companies, of course, are going to go to um, the athletes that have just much more media coverage. I mean, that's just that's just that's just tends to how they go. And so, I mean, I even deal with a lot of retired athletes, and, and that's a little bit out of the nil space, but that are looking for how to get started and how to push this stuff themselves that don't have as much techie um, kind of influence and a lot of it comes back to what you said with the local businesses. It, it tends to be like, I mean, I think it's just like any business that starts up, you know, start small and then grow, you know? And so what would you say um, out of a lot of these students that you work with, um, you say a lot of administrators, athletes, other companies that people that may want to open a sports related business, um, what would you feel on a on a personal level that you tend to see a lot of them struggle with when it comes to trying to you know grow their brand or grow personally as a as a person? Yeah, I think um, the thing that I see the most frequently, and maybe the difference between success and failure most of the time, is around the student athlete's perspective of whether they want to be an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what this is. NIL yeah. is a form of entrepreneurship. Yes. And the product happens to be the student athlete's personal brand, but they are an entrepreneur. And so, you know, taking, let's take this out of college sports space or out of sports generally. Mm -hmm. We talk to entrepreneurs, like you look at successful ones, you know, they, from a branding perspective, they 
understand, as you say, they understand their why, they understand, you know, their intent, they really understand their customers, and they find a way to communicate to those customers mm -hmm. about their intentions um, or eventually their products and services or personal brand. So the number one thing that I see as a factor between success and failure is, is that, is the ability to see yourself as an entrepreneur and say, what do I have to do to build my own business, right? Mm -hmm. And it starts with the personal brand. And then the, the student athlete can determine how they're going to uh, put that brand into action. Will they decide that they are in fact going to try to build a large social media following? And that's going to be where the direction they go. They really want to do social media influencer work. Or are they going to use that personal brand to build the best camp or clinic or do private instruction in their sport? Um, and these are sort of obviously uh, very different places on the NIL activity spectrum. I'm just using those as example, but you can't do you can't do anything successfully in NIL if you don't have your own personal brand. This is going to not going to sound very sexy, but straightened out. It doesn't have to be perfection, but it's got to be clear. Mm -hmm. What do you stand for? Who's your audience? How are you going to communicate to them? And I, I'll say another thing, Zach. Sorry to be so long-winded on this answer, but you know, you mentioned lack of time a few minutes ago. I mean. If you think pro athletes don't have a lot of time, talk to college athletes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's somewhere between five and seven hours of their week is not already accounted for. So between they're taking, uh, you know, a full class load and participating in practice, games, eating, sleeping, all at the end of the day, they've got about five to seven hours. So a week. And so the clearer they are in understanding their brand, the better off they're going to be when they determine which of the NIL paths in terms of activities they're going to pursue. If they're fumbling around with their brand, they're certainly going to be fumbling around trying to figure out NIL opportunities and activities. And it's just not a recipe for success. You know, the very last thing I'll say on this topic is, you know, you're you're largely in the business in, of like a, I would say a sophisticated branding model. You know, you don't you're not trying to knock out a brand in in, in an afternoon. Like you're going mm -hmm. through a real process and figuring things out over time, and that's really the sort of the gold standard that approach. Um, the student athletes are not; they, there just is not really enough time. To, mm -hmm. to go to that level. Now, hopefully later in their life, maybe upon graduation, maybe they're a pro athlete, maybe they're starting their career, maybe they're in technology, whatever it is, there's a time for them to, uh, to get to that gold standard level of figuring out their personal brand. But in the short term, they've got to keep it simple, keep it short, as long as it's clear and unique. And then they're, you know, they're in a, in a decent spot. It's funny that you say that because I 100% I agree with you. Um, college athletes, I mean, a lot of the college athletes that come to me, funny enough, and they'll, they'll ask me questions and they'll be like, you know, I'm, I'm having such a hard time figuring out. And this isn't just for athletes. I mean, this happens right. in, for a lot of college students um, having such a hard time figuring out what they want to do with their life. Um, and I mean, I think you and me can both can both uh, preach on this that, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, I I mean, I think you utilizing the grit scale is a, is a good example of that, you know, find something that you really want to do 10 years from now, and then, you know, kind of dive it down and, and you'll get to where you want to go. If you get into marketing, great. If you get into business, great. Um, 
from a from a college perspective, you know, you'll find your path and your path will grow to where you want. And your mindset, you are going to have mindset shifts. Your purpose is going to change. It's going to evolve and things of that nature. So it's okay. And one thing, one thing that you said that really hit on me was just starting. Um, because it's true. I when when college athletes come to us. I, I don't go and preach the gold standard. Like that's, a, I for one, I, I just know that they have no time. Um, I, I know it would be a huge investment for them. And so I know they don't really have that income coming in to, to make that 100%. And so, you know, you'll get a lot of them that come to me and they're like, you know, either their parent or someone they know will be like, oh, we developed a website, we created all these shirts, we did all we did all the tangible stuff. And I have to right. go, whoa, 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 you know, like, are you sure that's really what you want to do? And if you do, you you, you are going to have to pick that direction and go with it. Even professionals and in, in call and in, in I see from even a website perspective and, you know, their brand perspective, they're all over the place. They have like eight businesses going on within one, one overall brand. And as you said, kind of just pick a direction and kind of, you know, try it out, give it, give it some time, invest in it a little bit. And yeah, in three to four months, if you've done that commitment and you feel like it's not um, a suitable thing of what you want to do, then shift. And then, and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs>